So my camera decided to act up the minute that we started to go live. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Spiritual Matters Thursday with the Daily Huddle. I am your host, Dr. Monica Ogando. Have you heard the quote that says, everybody wants to get to heaven, but nobody wants to die? <laughs> We're going to be talking about what does it mean? What does it mean to get to heaven? The, qu the question today um, is exciting because I don't know that we have an answer to it. Do you have to die to get to heaven? We'll be talking about that today in Spiritual Matters Thursday. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Huddle Spiritual Matters Thursday. Like I said, I'm your host, Dr. Monica Alvando. And what are we doing today? With all the changes that are happening in the world, and I know every generation says that. Every generation says this is the most turbulent generation. This is the most changing generation. What the heck is going on with the world, et cetera, et cetera. But, and I think every generation would be right. <laughs> It's saying that about their particular generation. We just happen to have the perspective um, of all of those previous generations and this one. And one of the perennial questions that we have in, our, in spiritual journey is this idea that heaven is this place you go to, either in the afterlife or as a prize for living a good life. And I want to talk about it with you today. We want to get grounded. I want you to get grounded in the present moment. So I don't have that many people on video today, but oh, Rashida's here. Welcome, Rashida. So I want to ask you all, ask you all, pick something. What are you grateful for today? That's the first question. What are you grateful for today? Pick something, pick someone, pick a quality of yourself. I often ask people when I ask them, for example, what are you grateful for? How long does it take them before they say something about themselves, right? The second question I want you to ask yourself and answer for yourself is what time is it? What time is it where you are? The time where you are is exactly the time where I am. The time is now. And where are you? Right, you, you know, if you've been through the daily huddle community, you know how we answer that. I am where I say that I am. I am right here, right now. And how are you? I am how I say that I am. And right now, I'm excited to get into this conversation with you. So let's get us started. Let's get us started with this conversation. Like I said, in most cultures throughout most generations, people have this idea of heaven as a place you go to after you die and as a prize for living a good life. So the question that I have for you today, do you have to die to get to heaven? And you know what my answer is going to be? It depends on how you define heaven and it depends on how you define dying. <laughs> right? We're always checking our assumptions. We're always checking our definitions. Let me take a sip of water in my fancy glass. Uh, Lisette. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning, good morning, guys. Um, mm -hmm. I have a problem getting on. I have to lock out twice to come back in. So I don't know if people are having the same problem like I do. Oh, okay. That may be an issue, Lisette. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, so I hope that people are gonna get on and Lisette is gonna be handling that while, while we have our conversation. Um, let's define heaven and let's define dying, shall we? Because depending on how you define that, the answer is yes or no. <clears throat> I'm going to assert 
for the purposes of our discussion. That heaven is a state of mind. That heaven is a state of consciousness. And that state of consciousness is in union with the divine, however it is that you define the divine. A state of oneness and alignment and purpose with and about the divine. That's how, for the purposes of this discussion, we're defining heaven. And for the purposes of this discussion, how we're defining dying is turning away from, <clears throat> turning away from or giving up whatever the thing is that you're leaving behind. So do you have to die to get to heaven? Do you have to turn away from, give up something in order to live in alignment with your divine creator? You see how that becomes a different question? And so when we use our definitions to rephrase the question, then the answer to me at least would be yes. I do turn away from some things in order to live in alignment with my creator, with my divine source, as it were. And then the question becomes, well, what are those things that you're turning away from? What are the things that you're dying to in order to be in that level of heaven consciousness, right? And, and it's a lifelong journey, I say. It's not a, you're cooked, you're done, and now you're forever in heaven. This is a moment by moment decision. I assert, right? You don't have to agree with me, but that's where, that's the assertion that I'm making. That I turn away from egoic impulses. Not to say that I don't have them. I just don't pay attention to them. I just don't feel obliged to honor them. <clears throat> that I insert a pause in my consciousness. And sometimes, I mean, you probably have heard me say this before. If you could just imagine that a house, metaphorically, is your consciousness. If you read the Bible metaphorically, you'll see that um, Jesus <laughs> or any other prophet is going to somebody's house. So what that means is that the Christ consciousness is coming to somebody else's consciousness. They're waking up to their godhood. They're waking up to their own Christhood, et cetera, et cetera. But that's another sermon for another Sunday. We don't have time to talk about the Bible in metaphysical terms right now. I'm just using that as an example, right? And so the house is your consciousness. But if you notice, <clears throat> if somebody has a dog in their house, when somebody comes and knocking, the first one at the door and loud and obnoxious is the dog. <laughs> right the dog is coming like they're coming for them like like somebody came to visit you Fido no that see they're not coming for you Fido <laughs> you just happen to live in the house that is getting visited right and so in the same way usually when something happens to you or in your life the first one that responds is your ego you get a reaction, you get pissed, you get annoyed, you get uh, scared, you make up assumptions, et cetera. Those are all egoic impulses. That's why you check your assumptions okay, so that you can put your ego in its proper place. <clears throat> but when you do that, when you do that, when somebody comes to the door of your house of your own consciousness, the ego is usually the one that first responds and first comes to the door yapping and barking. Rah, 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 you, as the owner of the house, as the owner of that dog, are the one that has to put it in place. Because who knows, maybe that person is allergic to, to dogs. We're, we're going back and forth between analogies here, right? Maybe that person is an, um, allergic to dogs, or maybe they're scared of dogs. At the very least, they didn't come for the dog. They came for you. <laughs> so remove the inconvenience of having to deal with this dog all dog. <laughs> They didn't come for that. They came for you, right? And they might like dogs. They might have brought even a dog of, them, of their own, right? And a lot of times, this is what happens when two people get into any kind of squabble. It's usually their egos going back and forth with each other. It's not the essence of one going to the essence of the other. 
because at your essence, there would be no need for squabbles. And so when you do that, <clears throat> when you put the dog away or you send them to the back of the house or whatever, whatever, that is tantamount to you turning away from dying to those impulses, those egoic impulses, so that you can have a heavenly moment with your guest so that you can have an opportunity to, to be in community, in com, intimacy with your visitor. And I assert that most of our interactions, our relationships are the essence of you looking to connect and be in intimate connection and communion with the essence of someone else. And sometimes what happens is that our egos, our zero to sevens, our impulses, get in the way. Our assumptions, our fears get in the way. And we're either going to have to be conscious of them so that we can put them in their proper place, just like the homeowner puts the dog in its proper place, or they will run the show. Because if you've ever seen an undisciplined dog, it is hard to manage and it's hard to have a conversation when the dog is running rampant. So let's get in conversation about this. What do you say when someone says, do you have to die to get to heaven? What, what, how are you defining dying? How are you defining heaven? What's your answer to that question? And did anything that we just recently mentioned elucidate that for you in any kind of way? I would love to hear your input on that. Rashida, you got something? Let's see what we got to say about it. Who's here with me? Am I just talking to myself? Good, good morning. Good morning. Um, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Ogando. Uh, it's funny that you, uh, for the past weeks, then you've been touching topics and I have not been engaging to your um to your topic because in, I've been taking away so much, so mm -hmm. much from your topic. And why? Because in every year I go into a uh, 40 days fast and I am at the end of my 40 day fast. Mm -hmm. And when you was talking about God last week and uh, then you talk about spirit and now you're talking about death, you are being like, I'm paying deep down in my soul. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I have to break my silence to answer this question. Mm -hmm. And why I say to answer this question is because in, I myself don't know the answer. And when I say this is because in, I live in a, in a, in a mindset in a lifestyle that I don't want it to really punish my, my spirit and punish my soul and punish my lifestyle, period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I say this is because in dying for me, it's just a state of mind in mm -hmm. my concept. Mm -hmm. In my concept, it's just a state of mind mm -hmm. and living is what I choose to do in my personal setting, mm -hmm. in my personal belief in dying and living. So right. this is what I can say about the topic that it's for me, it's really deep. deep yeah. for me. So this is what I would say is uh, I don't believe in death. Mm -hmm. I just believe in living and living a good conscious awareness and a good conscious life to be able to pass it on to somebody else mm -hmm. that's what i can tell you about the topic this morning i love it i love it thank you and thank you for coming on with we all have our spiritual practices and disciplines and, and i admire and celebrate yours that's awesome who else has something to share or ask or complain about <laughs> Good morning, good morning. Hello, hello, who's that? Good morning, this good morning. 
My name is Florence. Hi. Uh -oh. <laughs> I turned it off. which is a difference of three pips, then you would have actually won the trade already. I hear the background. I don't hear you. All right. Sorry, yeah, I um, I turned it off. I wasn't speaking. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's hear somebody who's got who's got a, a question or a thought or a contribution to the conversation. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. 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 My name is Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi. Um, thank you for this discussion this morning. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting from it is that we experience or we die several deaths during our lifetime mm -hmm. by sometimes giving up things that does not serve us mm -hmm. to accomplish sometimes a higher state of being, you know, giving up some might be habits that's not serving us. For example, I am doing a cleansing mm -hmm. for the spring, spring cleansing. So I can feel more rejuvenated moving on into the summer, spring. So giving up the letting go, releasing the toxin mm -hmm. and the junk within is a way to me of dying mm. Mm -hmm. so that I can achieve and experience better health. Right. So for me, I've experienced many people transitioning, transitioning. Mm -hmm. And I've come to realize this, this is my opinion that um, that end of humanity is really, I call it the transitioning because life goes on. Mm -hmm. Life never stops. But when we use the word dying, sometimes it conjures up this fear, thinking that it's the end of life. Mm -hmm. But these little deaths that we experience as we go through life is, um, or can is a beautiful experience to just release you know all the the, the gong the stuff that's not serving us mm. to achieve bliss to achieve whatever it is we want to feel better yeah that's yeah. just my thank you for that i love bit. i love that you brought in the idea of the disciplines and how we um when we are preparing ourselves and sanctifying ourselves for a particular goal, such as a detox, such as a cleanse, such as um, any kind of decluttering in our physical or in our physical uh, physical body or our physical space, um, that too can be a form of <clears throat> dying to uh, unhelpful habits and so forth. So I appreciate you bringing that in. Cherie, you have your hand up. Cherie or Sherry? <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. <laughs> awesome. Right the first time. Great. <laughs> um, so I, I was trying to remember what happened to me recently where death came up in terms of how would I handle it? Mm -hmm. As much as I know that um, there is no cure for death and there's really just healing and we continue on on the journey, I realize when, if, not if, when death would occur at some point, somebody close to me, that I wouldn't handle it very well at mm. all. Um, so I started practicing leaning in more into the unseen and the unknown so that it would prepare me to have this relationship or whoever passes on that I could still connect with them, albeit in a different way. Mm -hmm. So wanted to get your thoughts on knowing what you know, and I don't know if you have this experience, knowing, but then practicing doing when it actually happens oh, in the yeah. same Oh, I mean, isn't that the whole ball of wax of this existence, right? <laughs> ah, talk about talk about cliff noting, you know, the human condition. Um, 
I mean, I think that's the whole point of contrast. And it's the whole point of what we would call negative or painful experiences is so that we would have a sandbox of practice, as it were. How do I know that I would be loving in the face of hate because I have faced hate, right? That's not, that's not a conceptual exercise. You actually have to live it. You actually have to experience it. You have to, have to go through it in order for you to make those decisions. And as painful as that sounds, eventually when you make those decisions time and time again, it's kind of like what how um, Laura, Laura was talking about, um, you know, the cleanse, you're going to have to pass through the cookie uh, aisle. <laughs> you're going to have to say no when somebody offers you something that isn't in alignment with what you're ingesting. You're going to have to uh, decline. Sometimes say no to the dinner party or say no to the friend get together because you don't want to be exposed to whatever it is that you don't want to be exposed to so that you don't have to have that temptation. But the other alternative is instead of saying no to something, be there and honor your word. Do and be who you said that you're going to do and be. And for these kinds of moments, <clears throat> facing the death of a loved one can be extremely painful only because of what we've made death to mean. If we make death to mean a loss, a ceasing to exist, somehow a diminishing of life force, then you can see why that would be extremely painful, particularly if you're very close and love that person. But if death is a graduation of sorts, if it's a transition, if to quote uh, the Jesus of the Bible, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And, and you're really just going from one room of the house of your own consciousness to the other, then you have not ceased to exist. And there is no loss, just a transference of energy. And that doesn't take away from the fact that you miss the person, right? Because you no longer have them in the way you've had them before. But if you think about this, and I think the, the past three years of COVID that we have gone through have really brought this to light, at least for me, that there have been many people in my life that I love very, very deeply, and I've not seen them in person. At the best, I've seen them on a Zoom, in a video conference call, or on, on FaceTime, or whatever, but I haven't been able to hug them, and touch them, and be with them. I've only been able to talk with them, either through technology or through the power of my own mind. And that's what happens when somebody transitions from this physical realm too, is that you're not able to be with them physically, but you are able to be with them through the power of your own mind by bringing their memory to you, by speaking to them wherever they are, just like we do with Zoom, just like we do with FaceTime, just like we do with any video conferencing technology. And so in that sense, whenever you have access to that technology, you have access to them. And when somebody has transitioned and you have access to your own consciousness, you have access to meditation, you have access to intention, you have access to um, messaging or, or talking with um, the memory of that person, then you have access to them that way as well. And it makes it less painful. It makes it a little bit more, I can deal. Right? Um, and eventually what happens is that they kind of become a secret weapon. They kind of become part of your ancestor team or your spiritual guide team or your, um, you know, the, the folks that got your back. And I remember a quote from Maya Angelou saying, um, you know, I come as one, but I stand on the shoulders of tens of thousands or something to that effect. I may be jacking it up. But when I think about all the people that had to live and transition in order for me to get here, you know, great grandparents, great, great, great grandparents, grandparents and so forth. I do stand on the shoulders of tens of thousands of folks. And they do come with me because they're part of my lineage, they're part of my consciousness, they're part of who, I, who has had to be here in order for me to be here. And so in that sense, we're all connected. Um, and that brings me peace. I don't know if it brings you peace, but it brings me a bit of solace. It brings me a bit of like, okay, okay, you haven't left me. I'm not alone. We are with each other, right? In, in, um, in some cultures, there's a saying that, uh, that says there are, there are two times when someone dies. One is when they release their physical, their physical essence. And the other is the last time somebody says their name, right? And so we live on, even though we've released our physical essence, we still live on in the memories of others. 
um, and the last time somebody says your name is that second death, right? So hopefully that's helpful. Thank you. You're so welcome. Stan, you have something? Yeah, you know, I was thinking, Doc, um, that um, I've been thinking about it a lot lately that if we accept the premise that there was one creative source from which everything came from, everything manifested from this one source, right? And I do, I do, I do, I, do, I subscribe to that thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Then everything was made from that source. And we refer to that source as being omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we refer to it as being all-knowing, omniscient. And my question I've, I've said to myself recently, and I've come to really, really embrace this and really believe this strongly. There is no death. Okay. There's no death. There is no real death. Nothing really, really, really dies. Mm -hmm. Everything must stay alive because, see, we are thoughts. The, the children of the mind of the source of God, if we will, are God's thoughts. And God can never forget anything. So God could never forget any one of us because we were thoughts in, God, thoughts in the mind of God. Mm -hmm. If God can never forget us and the children of God are what God thinks, everything that God has thought has become creation, then whatever, and God can't forget anything, then we are eternal. Mm -hmm. We I'm, are I'm eternal. Are, you, you're following me? I'm we are you. the thoughts of God and God can't forget anything because God is all knowing. So we live forever. Mm -hmm. The difference when we die, we die in a we die in a state of consciousness that we might be in. The reality mm -hmm. is that we are already in the highest level of being that there is, pure spirit, because we were made from the only thing that there is, which was pure spirit. Mm -hmm. And that spirit could only create from itself since there was nothing else to be created except from itself. Mm -hmm. So we are spirit and we never die. Mm -hmm. But we can entertain all different levels of consciousness that do not harmonize with the true essence of who we really are, that true spiritual never dying being. So when we have those different levels of consciousness that do not really harmonize with what our true essence is, and we're learning this because we don't know all that about ourselves, we're learning it, all right? When we're, when we're out of harmony with some of those things and we come into a harmony, what has happened is we have died to that old level of consciousness, that consciousness that was not truly the true consciousness of our real being. Mm -hmm. So dying is on that and that way, kind of like Rashida was saying, but there truly is no dying. Beautiful people have all transitioned. Hellish people have all transitioned. If it was a punishment and all that, then the good people wouldn't go there. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Nobody ever dies. Mm -hmm. nobody we are eternal forever we just change in our being we change mm -hmm. in, not to not our true being but we change in that we change in the level of consciousness and in the level of energy that we represent yeah 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 i totally hear you i totally hear you laura says energy cannot die it can only be transformed i love it mm -hmm. i really enjoy this this conversation because it allows us some respite right it's so interesting that our life can be so ephemeral and at the same time so final. And it's, it's like pick a lane, <laughs> pick a lane. If it's ephemeral and it means nothing, then why are you so hurt when somebody dies? It's just as meaningless as, as the living, right? Um, but if there's meaning in living and then there's meaning in, in dying, then it can be an honor. It can be a transition. It can be a graduation of sorts. I love what you're bringing into the table, Sam. Ronald, you have something? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a definitely an interesting conversation, and I picked up on uh, what Stan just said, and also on what Laura Laura Clark mm -hmm. said earlier. I think we can. I mean, from Laura Clark's standpoint, I think we can practice dying, mm. um, in a sense that you know the 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 process, the cleansing process that she did. In a way, like yes, because there is just like just like, uh, and I understand her concept is that way. I mean, at least I got it that way. Just like we change season, you know, if if we consciously 
make the effort to do certain things that rejuvenating ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's a process that we turn off uh, something. Basically, we die off whatever is in the moment that is not that we want to um, cleanse, if I can use that word. Mm -hmm. uh, but but at any rate, it, it's is anything that you stop, and then you rebuild. I think it's a process of dying that that matter in your life, and then re come out another way. So right. so that's that's my understanding from Clark uh, from Laura's uh, point point of mm -hmm. view. But mm -hmm. you know, and and it it, it struck me when she said that, and um, and now from from Stan's uh, point of view, it's it's definitely feel like. Uh, we are internal. I mean, it's what's eternal is it was inter eternal is is really what we leave around, what what we build up and leave to sure. this earth, and and that's 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 an interesting conversation. Just thought I had that. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It's it is it goes back to what I said at the beginning of the of our time together, which is we. First, we have to start with us defining <laughs> our terms. If we are defining dying as a turning away or a giving up of, and if we're defining heaven as a state of consciousness, then yes, you do have to die to get to heaven. But if we're defining heaven as a place that you go to as a prize for living a good life, then we'll forever be in a state of debate. Because that that has heretofore been unproven. So thank you everybody for this amazing discussion and for joining in on it. I appreciate you. As always, remember to love, generously laugh, loud, give of yourself, stress less, eat more plant-based, sleep at least seven hours, <laughs> move your body, move your tail feather, and of course, audit your assumptions. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Thank you for being with us. See you next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Awesome job. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>